welcome to La Quinta on the red side. And your defending champions, Fountain Valley on the blue side. All right, we're going to kick it off for a fun night. Thank you so much. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you very much, Mark, and we are excited for this game, the show match. It is now time, Fountain Valley versus La Quinta. I am, of course, Daniel the Friendly Head Crab, here joined by Ernesto Matsuda. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for this wonderful event. This grudge match is really hype. A lot of history behind these teams as competitive scene inside eSports for high schools. That is certainly true. Fountain Valley, as was just mentioned, currently holding the first place seed or the first place victory over last year. And they very much want to hold this, but La Quinta might want to take that away from them. Yeah, reigning champions, they might be dethroned. This grudge match really sets the tone of how this coming league uh, season during the month of April is going to turn out and really just sets the pace whether or not La Quinta is able to bounce back show, hey, we're not going to be a shutout from last year. We're going to show that we were capable of making it to the finals and that we're just as good as Fountain Valley. And hopefully we'll see some really good uh, players and show, have them show up. Certainly. And we just saw the two teams on our screen. So let's talk about that for just a moment. Fountain Valley coming out on the blue side. What are you expecting from this squad? You know, first off, we've got to point out the jungler and the AD carry from last year switched positions. So now we have Coben playing jungle, and we have Khan playing AD carry, so that's a bit of a mix-up, but these players have been playing together since middle school. So I don't know if that screams synergy already, but they have so much synergy as a team, and it really sets the tone on how they're going to play this play style. They have really good comms. They know how to trust each other, which is really uh, something that you need when you're playing League of Legends. So from this team, we're watching some group-oriented efforts, how they're able to take the synergy that they've built together over the years and really incorporate that into their League of Legends play. But of course, going up against them, we have La Quinta on the red side. What can you tell me about these fine gentlemen? You know, La Quinta, you know, every top tier does need some synergy, but La Quinta, their star player, in my opinion, is Mikey XD, finishing at Masters at the end of Season 8. We all know that grind was quite rough these past, uh, the last week or so. So props to him. And during that last season, he was really the leader show, shining out from La Quinta, you know. Um, he was setting the pace for all these matches. He was the jungler, so a lot of influence across the map, mostly fo focused on top and mid. So we're going to be expecting these matches to be focused on the top lane matchups and the mid lane matchups. So going to be watching those solo lanes then a little bit more, those lanes where we see one champion going mano a mano against the other in that matchup, and how we can see the junglers really going from their roams around the jungle and then walking up to either the top lane or the mid lane and just really starting to influence those matches in, well, their own way. And it's going to be Mikey XD to be the one who has maybe a little bit more proficiency, has that little bit extra skill that can really throw the influence on the matchup. And in, here in front of us, we can see our amazing crowd getting ready as we're just about to go into this game. Yeah, picks and bans right off the bat. We see Found Valley ban out the Graves. And we see Pocket Pick, we see the Katarina banned out from Kobe. Kobe has been a renowned Katarina main uh, during his time in ranked. And so far, not too expected. We do see the Zin Zhao ban, which is, um, Zin Zhao lately has been one of those early game junglers that are able to influence the tempo of the matchup and really start the ball rolling for his team. They want to take that away from Mikey XD because we're really just going to pay attention to the jungler, the jungle matchup here. Yeah, we were certainly talking about how strong Mikey XD is, and it's unsurprising then to see Fountain Valley ban out some of those more aggressive champions, take away some of those tools from Mikey XD to maybe give themselves a little bit more leeway as they start up in that early game. Yeah, we do see Irelia banned out as well. Morgana banning out, banned out from La Quinta. First pick for Fountain Valley. What are you expecting? I'm maybe seeing Lucian the Hover. I was expecting maybe the Braum. I think you can get a lot more from Braum. Braum's been one of those pr prominent supports uh, this past meta, but I think Lucian's- And there he is. Yeah, we were talking about how strong Braum is, and with Fountain Valley immediately picking up the Lucian, it's completely unsurprising to see the combo of the Lucian Braum immediately blending, being split apart. That combo is so strong, and I'm really unsurprised to see both of these teams trying to get that strategic advantage on their own side. Yeah, and then La Quinta picking up Braum and Zoe. So, Ifalls is a huge Zoe player. 
you know, I've heard stories that his Zoe is quite scary, and we saw those Zoe buffs, so that's not a joke to be uh, taken so lightly. But we do see the Bard and Urgot locked in. Um, Alt 4 playing a bit of uh, Bard, and it's kind of like his pocket pick. I think it's one of his better champions that he that he doesn't bring out as much, so... Uh, and it is very surprising, well, it's unsurprising to me to see this Urgot, such a powerful pick in the current meta, having so much lane dominance. It's really very fun for me to see this, and maybe, just maybe, we'll have that little bit of an extra, uh, more aggressive top lane if we're seeing picks like this already on the board. Yeah, as the last, our band going out, it's going to be Zed or Bed, and Zed is going to bed tonight. Uh, I'm not too sure whether or not that's targeted towards Kobe. Uh, I don't see a lot of his champion pool surrounding uh, Zed, but maybe they just don't want to play around it. Ifos doesn't like that matchup into Zoe, so that could be it. I mean, if you're looking at some of these bands, they we seem do. incredibly targeted towards Kobe. We have arguably a four full bands targeted yeah, towards the mid all, lane. Except Zed. Those are all champions he plays. He plays Morgana mid, he plays Irelia mid lane. And Zed's traditionally a mid lane yeah. champion. So it definitely seems like La Quinta is focusing one player, trying to exploit and create a weak point in the team of Fountain Valley. And we we're talking about how strong Mikey XD can be in this matchup. So the plan coming in for La Quinta might just be to target this mid lane, which still hasn't been picked, and really just use that to utterly break open this game. Yeah, this could strike some fear into Fountain Valley. Uh, the champion target uh, the champion pool for just one person really limits on what they can play, and that causes them to be put in a position where they're not so comfortable. They're forced to pick like a safe mid laner that is not so impactful. But you know, maybe we can see the Lissandra picked up here if it's not already picked up. Um, I'm assuming Fountain Valley is just going to pick up Lissandra. That sounds like the best case scenario they can do for Kobe. And there, you, there you have it. Yeah, the Lissandra coming out. So a champion that is traditionally a little bit safer, has the ultimate to keep her safe, has a lot of mobility. I really like this pickup because it does negate a lot of that mobility gank potential from the mobility, from the safety. So a good pickup, followed immediately by an Echo pick. Yeah, I'm assuming that Echo's going to go down in the jungle. Uh, I've heard rumors go about that, you know, Echo jungle is something that's pretty good. Uh, definitely something that might have been practiced uh, for this upcoming grudge match. But looking over, we do see the Shen top lane against Urgot. What are your thoughts on that? I think Shen isn't so good into this matchup. I think Urgot definitely has a bit of an upper hand just because it's Urgot the champion. Uh, not so busted now, in my opinion, but he's still really strong in the top lane. And rounding it off, it's Mikey XD's famous Jarvan that he seems to always love picking up. Yeah, we've definitely talked about this pick coming from Mikey XD. He just loves that Jarvan, loves playing aggressively and making as much pressure as he can early in the game. And we already talked about it. That is something we're going to want to watch going into this game. But I'm going to take it a step back. And you were asking me about the Shin versus Urgot matchup. And this is one of those matchups where Shin doesn't really want to fight a ton. He wants to play a little bit safer, just farm out. And he wants to be the utility for his entire team. Use the ultimate to make plays globally around the map. But you have the Urgot, who's someone who wants to be incredibly aggressive, and it's on the shoulders of Urgot to try to make something happen to that Shen, try to make sure he has a dominant laning phase that he can just use to spill over onto the rest of the map. And this forces for Found Valley to be on their toes, because now we're just being told that they're not going to be... Uh, Lakita's not playing around top side. They're going to go ahead and play around bot side, because now you could potentially could have four people bot lane and snap of your fingers. You see Mikey XD jump onto the bot lane Found Valley, and you just have I Trash just... TR, use Shen ultimate on top of Jarvan, and that's four people versus two. That's not a really good odds for Fountain Valley. So they do have to be careful about that if they're going to be running that Shen and Jarvan combo. Yeah, and it's something I'm going to be very excited to see. We talked about how we did expect to see a little bit more of that top lane focus. So it will be very interesting to see La Quinta suddenly turn on their heel and put a little bit more on that bot lane. And with some of the changes to AD carries that we've recently seen, we've seen them be coming back into the meta, that glass cannon that really can carry the game if it just spirals out of control. It'll be absolutely crucial if they're able to get this lane rolling early in the game so they can use it to just get so much pressure as the game goes on. Yeah, pressure is the name of the game. This is best of one. It's not best of three. This is a whole different world they're going to walk into. It's not, oh, we have a second chance in game two. We can come back from this. No, you settle this right here, right now. Winner takes it all. This is best of one. You got to show up guns blazing in this best of one matchup. Yeah, guns blazing indeed. And talking about guns blazing, 
You're on a live stage. You have an audience watching. You have an audience cheering your peers behind you. And while that is exhilarating, you also have to just think about what that does to a player, the nerves, how you feel. And in a best of one, where one mistake can mean so much, where one crucial play can mean the entire series, the entire grudge match, whether you hold your crown until the end of next year, you just have to be wondering what is going on in the minds of these players. What are they thinking? and how they're going to be able to carry that momentum through the game. Who is going to show up today? Yeah, who's going to show up? Who's going to be the rising star? Who's going to defend their champions on one side? Who's going to take back first place? And that really just comes down to one single game. So that's a lot of pressure on my shoulders. And if I was in that position, what about you? I mean, I'm certainly not going to say <laughs> I wouldn't be intimidated in their shoes. I believe that's why I was bringing that up. It's spicy. Yeah. I love spiciness. I think that's why <laughs> you, we see all four bring out the Bard. I've never seen him bring out a, a Bard in a best of three. Uh, from last season, you know, I know he says, like, oh, I like to play Bard. That's one of my main champions. But I've never seen him pull it out in the main season. I've never seen him pull it out last year's tournament. And all of a sudden, this is a grudge match. These people, these teams have rivalries. This is already established from last year. And he needs to show up, say, yeah, we're still a relevant team. We may not have won the, been the roster that won the first uh, championships for NASF, but we're just as good. And it's going to be a very interesting bot lane to watch early in the game because Fountain Valley, if you'll remember, had Lucian Braum. And that team or that combo is a level two nightmare to play against. If they are able to get going early, Braum, one of the most terrifying supports, level one, has that stun, can just pin someone against the wall and deal so much damage combined with Lucian, someone who can just jump immediately on you and really just blow you away. We've heard time and time again about the Lucian level two power spike. So if Fountain Valley is able to get a strong play going in the early game, that could be a great end for their bot lane. Yeah, especially comboed in with Bard, who has a lot of early game damage for those bot lane skirmishes. The Bard passive with the Meebs do so much damage. And if he lands a stun with the Q on both bot laners for La Quinta, that could be an easy first blood going over to Khan here. So something they have to be careful. Lakina can play on their toes and play safe, but they're also a pick team comp, in my opinion, because you have the Zoe. Zoe's not so good in team fights. She's just good at catching out people in the wrong position at the wrong time and capitalizing off of that. As we are loading onto the Rift on blue side, we have Found Valley High School with Topaz in the top lane. Coben in the jungle playing Echo. Kobe playing Lissandra in the mid lane. And Khan and all four playing Lucian and Bard in the bot lane. And in the red side, we have La Quinta with I Trash in the top side, Mikey XD in the jungle, I False in the mid lane, with I Mango and Huey in the bot. And, and we already see five stacks already in the bot lane. They're all here, they're all ready, and we see the flag scouting out. Found Valley's been found out. They're like, oh, time to run away. Yeah, that was a nice scout from both of these teams. Very well done by Fountain Valley to be prepared for that invade. They sent all five members of their bottom side. If they had not done that, that would have given La Quinta a very nice opportunity to just walk in as five and maybe find a few early kills for themselves, get that gold, get themselves snowballing. But on the same side, very well done for La Quinta. Throw that flag, get that vision, become aware that La Fountain Valley is hiding in that bush. And in the end, both teams see each other, think, you know what, I don't want this, go on home. Uh, Kobe gonna run into Ifalls, uh, gets hit by the paddle shot. You hate to see it, but you know, I guess Ifalls is able to take the winning lead in that short trade already. Both actually, Jungler's gonna be starting on different sides of the maps, different quadrants. We see Lakita starting on the northern quadrant of the map while uh, Found Battle's going to be starting on the bottom quadrant of the map. Yeah, and talking about these jungles, we mentioned it briefly earlier, but we actually have Cobbin on that Echo jungle. And you mentioned this was something that he has played in the past. What can you tell me about this jungler? It's not something we're used to seeing. Uh, definitely the weaknesses with Echo jungle is that the first clear is horrible. It's really, it's not as slow, but it just brings you so low. And if Mikey actually is able to realize, hey, he has a horrible first clear. I can prioritize off that and put a lot of pressure on Coben. Then it puts Fountain Valley in, a, in the behind seat and puts Lakinta driving this tempo of the game here. But I think they're just going to be standard routes here. We see Coben just going to go straight to his Wolves and Blue buff, which is pretty standard. And we see Jarvan 
hanging around, already has the crab on the bot side. Crab vision is definitely important. You are the friendly head crab, but unfortunately, we are going to have to take down those crabs in order to establish a vision for these teams. We saw Bar trying out for that stun that is so crucial, not fully able to land it, but the, that is an ability we're going to want to watch. If Bard is able to throw that ability out, if he lands the stun on one of those two champions, it could mean disaster for La Quinta's bot side. So a huge ability I want to continue to watch as it goes forward through this game. Yeah, Cosmic Binding, a lot of pressure on all four to land those. If he lands just one good one, it really just turns the tables on any of these team fights going on here as we do see Kobe getting almost hit with the Sleepy Bubble Trouble, but going to take a lot Shunk of poke down. damage. Zoe still wants more. Auto attack deals so much damage, but is going to be able to get out with that Grasping Claw. But Dry Trash on the top side, getting chunked down to low health is going to be all right in the end. But this is the power of the Urgot we were talking about. Yeah, Urgot's just a huge bully. Um, really, is really just tough matchups where if you want to, if you're going against Urgot, you pick Scion. I think Scion just negates the pressure from Urgot past level six because I don't think Scion really cares if he dies. Scion's just like, well, you killed me, but I'm also back alive again. So I think you just negate the pressure of Urgot with the Scion pick, but they decide to focus on this team-oriented team composition from Laquinta, and they're gonna go for the Shen, which is fine, but. As you can see, he's got to pay the price. Beautiful Sleepy Trouble Bubble is going to find a nice bit of damage down on Kabe, but in the end, not something that's going to be followed up on. But you can just see the dominance coming out from this Zoe already, already having about a 7 CS lead. And you know what it's time for? What time is it? Time for a quick summary of League of Legends. Okay, so CS stands for Creep Swords. You see all those little dudes that are running down in the mid lane? You see them in like red and blue? Yeah. Do you see those? Yeah, okay, yeah. those are called minions. When you kill them, you get money. You want money because it means you get items. And when you get items, it means you do more damage, which means you kill people better. And you want to kill people because it means you can take your towers and win the game. So in short, those little things, they want to kill them. When they kill them, they get money. And when they get that money, it means they can do better as the game goes on. So when we say creep score, it means that they have more money because they've killed more minions better. And that is exactly what's happening in the mid lane for La Quinta. Yeah, what did the minions get out of this? Nothing. They are loyal, and we are all proud of them. Yeah, They're many doing lives their matter. best. <laughs> as, look at this. This is horrible for Eye Trash. I'm sure he's just going to be like, as long as I survive the laning phase, I should be okay. Um, that's generally what your game plan is when you're playing Shen. You're not expected to win the lane matchup. You're just supposed to survive the laning phase. That's the ultimate goal for Shen here. Not expecting to dominate his opponent. He's just going to respect his opponent, realize he's really weak, and Zoe going to use the cleanse. Interesting ability from Zoe here. The W able to pick up summoner spells from other champions. So I've seen Zoe's do like three flashes within three seconds. It's interesting to say the least. I think we've all seen that. It was in her <laughs> video when she was released and absolutely crazy. I remember I freaked out. Everyone freaked out. And this Zoe is definitely starting to make Kobe freak out, already having the lead, but immediately three man top flash done is going to put Topaz in a real sticky situation. He's going to go down for first blood. Flash from Mike XD is going to keep him alive, and Laquinta is going to be real happy with that. Yeah, three members rotating. We do see Kobe trying to shove in the mid lane, but ultimately first blood going over to Zoe is really good. Does get the two stacks on. Uh, the ring there, uh, able to get those two stacks with the AP, which is really good, and really sets the tone of this mid lane matchup here. For was once a slightly okay matchup for Lissandra, it just puts a lot of fear with that Dark Seal stack going in, and I falls sitting in a really comfortable position right now. That is true. And earlier we were talking about how, you know, maybe it's going to be a little bit more bot lane focused. They pick the Shen. They're going to wait till at level six and just throw down that four man bot lane gank. But no, they didn't want that. They just wanted to walk right up top. They wanted to get that early kill on Topaz, free up eye trash from all of that pressure from that Urgot we were talking about. And honestly, they did a fantastic job. They blew the teleport and that just gives eye trash so much more room in this lane. Well, Shen already has like two teleports, you know, you have the standard teleport and then you have the stand united, but, you know, it tries to compensate the CS uh, difference between Shen and Urgot, which is slightly still building. It wasn't so bad now that he died already, but uh, really, I trash not able to compromise and try to capitalize that lead he got from killing his lane opponent. Certainly true. We're going to hit a little bit, go back to farming for just a little bit longer. I'm sure we'll have a lot more of those really exciting ganks as these champions do start hitting level six as they get their ultimate abilities that can just change the way a fight is played. But for the moment, we can just look at some of these CS leads still in the bot lane, actually going fairly even, which to me is surprising. We were talking about how Khan and Altex 4 had this early dominant bot lane, 
But despite that, we actually see iMango doing a fantastic job of mitigating this early pressure and really just keeping up in farm. And as the game goes later, this Kai'Sa will become stronger and stronger with time. Yeah, and I th think we had to give this a lot towards Hiwi, um, really doing a lot of good work on that Braum. I think Braum's able to negate the pressure from Lucian just with uh, shields up from Braum, just able to negate the damage from going through t from himself over to his AD carry, and it makes trades a lot safer for Kai'Sa. That is certainly true. And looking at the jungle, we actually see a little bit of a minion lead in the side of Cobbin standing about two camps up. That means he has cleared his jungle more efficiently in a way that has given him more gold than Mikey XD. Mikey XD has been looking for some ganks, but hasn't been too successful. He hasn't been able to find those kills, find ways to impact his various lanes and get them ahead. So I'm going to be interested to watch their pathing, see where they're going to try to put pressure, especially as Mikey is now hit level six. But meanwhile, Topaz actually going on trash. Nice dash is going to keep him alive for now. And actually a fairly even health trade. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. Definitely that W going under from Shen negates the auto attacks coming out from Topaz. So he's safe and sound, but Mikey actually doesn't have his flash available. So we have to keep in mind of that. Still around two minutes on his flash. He did use it on the top side when they killed Topaz, but with that being down, it really just puts down his gank potential by a lot. He still has the flag, uh, flag drag, but you still need the flash at some cases to just close the gap needed against, say, a Lissandra, a Lucian, or a Bard even. And I really do like the play of both of their, these teams. They're playing a little bit slower, a little bit more methodically. They're putting down these wards, you see that little thing in the bush with three bars, and gives them the extra vision. They're putting it a lot of these down, and they're just taking their time, farming the minions, waiting for good fights. They're not having so much of a kill fest, and more just focusing, waiting for their opportunities, and using them when they come up. Yeah, speaking of opportunities, Lakinta able to prioritize catch, alt four in a bad spot. Tribus trying to get the vision as you spoke of, and it cost him his life. And now we see Lakinta say, oh, well, this Infernal Jakes is just free for us now. Yeah, going to take down this early dragon is going to make all of their abilities just do more damage for the rest of the game is going to be absolutely critical and a nice pickup for them this early. But meanwhile, we see a little bit of waiting in the bush from Cobbin, maybe looking to try to get a nice gank on Ifalls. Yeah, Ifalls does have to be careful. I mean, it's Zoe. You're ganking the Zoe. It's quite difficult to say. The champion has so much utility and damage to back it up. Sleepy Bubble Trouble able to sleep one opponent is pretty good enough for me when you're trying to escape from a gank. That basically says you're in timeout for two seconds, all right? Gives me time to run away. Uh, so it's going to be really hard to get these ganks off on eye trash. So I believe Coven should be really focusing on this bot lane. I think ganking the Kai's, he has a better chance ganking the Kai's and Braum than he does ganking, say, the Zoe. Maybe the turn's a little bit easier as well, but I think you really just want to keep this Kai'Sa behind and away from scaling so quickly. It is hard for Echo because he doesn't have as many stuns and slows and crowd control abilities that he can use to really set up these ganks. He only has really one, and it's very reliant on positioning. So... For him, trying to gank this bottom lane would be difficult because it would be very reliant on this Bard or Alt F4 to really find a way for him to get in. Otherwise, it wouldn't be too hard for Imango and Huey to just walk away, and that would be a lot of time spent that he could be using to farm his jungle and just get money. Yeah, we see Mikey XD hover on the top side, maybe looking to get Rip. Harold does realize that it's warded, as we see a very favorable trade go down in the bot lane between Imango and uh, Can. Can. You are calling it Cobbin now coming down to the bot lane. A Bard ultimate flashed away is going to completely disengage that fight. Good eyes on Laquinta. Good job being careful to keep their AD carry alive. Yeah, nothing much for Cobin to get out of that gang once it's already over. Going to go back to his jungle. It's down. His, only, his Raptors are is up, so he doesn't really have much to do. So he's going to kind of just stay around there, see if they go back up towards the lane. Because he realizes Braun doesn't have flash. And Braum's really the only person able to protect Kaisa, so if he's able to see them being out of position again, but we do see Vision covered over from Laquinta. They're going to be able to spot Coben next time he comes around, so Coben's just going to go back to his jungle and farm it out. And for the most part, this is really good. Braum going in for the engage, pops down the ultimate. Jarvan 4 is here, but Bard over the wall. Khan might try to get away as well. One more hit does bring down this Donald to 4 solo, does go down for second blood, but that is going to go over to Mikey XD. But more people are here. Common looking for something he can get. Eyeballs goes forward, but doesn't land the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. And just like that, both teams going to disengage. Yeah, Lakeen's a bit by bit slowly establishing a lead already sitting around 2k gold lead uh, actually around 1k 
uh, above Fountain Valley, and most of the gold sitting on top of Mikey XD. As we see, Coburn looking to go back in, not quite going to get the stun. Uh, you hate to see it, but speaking of Mikey XD, we Mikey XD is really a key player, and if you're putting a lot of uh, gold and influence onto Mikey XD, then that's really the name of the game for La Quinta. And just look at his items. He is not building tanky. He's not building health. He's not building to try to survive. He is building damage. He wants to jump on you, slam down that spear, and just utterly demolish your champion. He already has two kills and an assist, and he is going to be absolutely monstrous at the way that at the at this rate. Yeah, scary Jarvin, who can just one shot you, is. Definitely a threat to be reckoned with here coming out from La Quinta. If they're able to play around that, they should just be able to pick off Fountain Valley like birds, just drop them one by one. And look at the damage from Zoe. Oh, we're already doing half the HP of Lissandra Kobe. Gonna eat that paddle shot like a champ. Yeah, and I false on this Zoe. Such a skill dependent champion. Can you land that ability? Can you make it connect? really depends on if you're able to get your damage off. And Ifalls has been doing such a fantastic job of just landing those skill shots. Here they go again. Can't you get it over the wall? Mikey is here. Does not land it, but doesn't matter. The Cataclysm comes down, but a flash from Khan is going to keep him safe. Yeah, flash expended for the cost of what? Cataclysm? I take that any day. Like, he's really applying pressure here. And... They really have to play around topside at this point because Balin is really just getting focused here from La Quinta. We already see Mikey XD here for the re-gank. Doesn't have Cataclysm, but now is a little bit too far away, not able to execute that gank properly. But meanwhile, Fountain Valley is actually going to find a kill for themselves in the top lane. They actually just go up there and dive. I trash under his own turret. But nah, don't worry about that. There's a fight going on in the bot side. Beautiful disengage. Rommel that comes down. Gets Lysandra so low. And a beautiful paddle star is going to take down the Lucian Kabe. Ultimately keeps him alive a little bit longer, but it's not enough. Rom gets a nice bit of damage, but Zoe again almost gets the kill. Doesn't use the ignite. Would have secured it. But in the end, a nice few kill pickups from La Quinta. And this is what we were talking about. We were saying that I fall to Zoe is a force to be reckoned with. You let it slide through the picks and ban phase, and I fall is going to say, well, if you're not going to respect me for that, then I'm just going to go ahead and get my champion that I want to play. And he's doing pretty amazing on this champion. 3 and 0, really putting in a lot of work, setting the pace for these ganks going on on the bottom side of the map here, and forcing Topaz to have to rotate between top and stay just, just stay bottom and hold the lane. Yeah, the synergy between Mikey XD this game and Ifalls has been amazing. They've just been walking, wandering, but roaming between these lanes and doing a fantastic job of getting pressure. But it's not all downhill for Fountain Valley. We saw during that bottom lane engagement that two people went up top and they just killed I trash and got the first turret of the game. And the first turret of the game is special because it gives you extra gold. And that is one reason why this gold disadvantage is not as large for Fountain Valley as it otherwise would have been. So a good mitigation and a good play on the other side of the map for Fountain Valley. Yeah, and forces I falls to burn his actual flash, not the W flash, an actual real flash coming out, burning out from I fall. So that's going to be down, but. End of the day, well, it's still happening in the river is once again. Lakita's found a nice fight for themselves. Gobbit trying to escape, but the cataclysm comes down. Yeah, Lakita's gonna play it like a pack of wolves, just stick together, see who's isolated, prioritize on that, and they're gonna take whatever they want. They don't care how many ultimates or how many summoner spells they spend to kill one person, they're gonna commit to it. And it's working for them because they're able to push the small lead that they had. It was only 0 and 2. And now look at them, it's 1 and 6. Fountain Valley have to play behind. And really, they're looking for a way to come back into this game. Maybe Urgot can pull it together, but even then, this Zoe's looking quite intimidating. Ooh, a sleepy trouble bubble's going to land, and that's gonna be a lot of damage on Khan. And just like that, I'm angle from the side picks up the kill. Yeah, killer instinct able to get I Mango right between Khan and Khan's not able to do anything at all. That's what happens when you eat those sleepy bubble troubles. It's very uh, detrimental if you're going up against Zoe, if you get hit by that. But meanwhile, a nice stun goes down on Huey. Chunks him to half health, but his team is there to back him up, and he is going to make it out alive. Yep, I mean, he survived. That's pretty good for them. La Quinta really needs their support in order for uh, to keep I Mango alive, because really it's just Braum able to keep Kaisa alive is kind of their key point here. Kaisa doesn't have her two to three item power spike just yet. 
They're really just kind of relying for iFalls to keep up the pressure while they buy time for iMango to get the items needed to outscale Lucian and they're succeeding in that because there's not enough pressure being retalia retaliated from Fountain Valley. They need to come back with a lot more pressure if they really want to find a way to win this game. Certainly true. And we talked earlier about the synergy between Fountain Valley and Lakita's like, you know, synergy, we got some of that too. And they've been doing a great job of just rotating as a team, getting a kill and transitioning it into an objective. We saw them pick up that second Earth Dragon earlier in this game. That, that will make them deal even more damage to objectives. Towers, dragons, and barons will fall down before them like butter. And that's going to be real nice. But meanwhile, Itrash may be going a little bit too far forward. The dash is going to keep him safe in the bot lane, but he needs to be careful. Yeah. Also, one thing to point out is that Coben does have Rift Herald. They were able to pick it up during that bot lane skirmish. It was a slight win for Found Valley, but still losing members for that. But we have to see, did it expire? Or, okay, I think he's using it bot side. Yeah, there we go. It was probably going to expire eventually. Um, not able to actually get a really good usage of the Rift Herald is a worrying trend for Found Valley. That was kind of their come back into that because Rift Herald really allows you to pop open the side of the map. And if you're not able to do that with Rift Herald, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, Rift Herald thrown it down bottom. I believe it does get the tower. I can't see it no. on the minimap. It doesn't, unfortunate. And yeah, it's just well done by Lakinta to mitigate that as well as possible. Blue is going to be <laughs> stolen. Cheeky steal coming out from Cobbin. Uh, Cobbin's going to say, thanks for the leash. I'll see you later. Ooh, but I don't know if Mikey XD is happy with that. Jumping over the wall. Maybe went a bit a little bit too far forward. There are three members of Fountain Valley down here. And a beautiful Sleepy Trouble Bubble is not going to be enough. Cobbin's going to use that ultimate to get away. And a beautiful kill pickup on the Star Jungler of La Quinta. And it's not over yet as a nice ultimate is going to come out from Barn. And what's happening? There he goes. Good by Huey. What a beautiful stun. And this is what Fountain Valley needed. Did you see the shutdown gold from Jarvan? I think that was like 600 gold. That's really good. Able to come back from this game. And really, Mikey XD being dead negates so much team fighting pressure coming out. After you kill Braum and Jarvan, you're just left with Zoe and Kaisa, who aren't able to set up team fights as well as Braum or Jarvan. So it's a lot for Fountain Valley to steamroll them, and they're looking for more. Yeah, jumping in immediately, landing the stun, gets one going right on to the Kaisa, but ooh, just like that, a return kill a turret does a lot of damage. Yeah, Karno Shift not available for Coben to drop the tower aggro, but I mean, Coben cashed in for two shutdowns, so I think he's okay with that. Does give up the shutdown goal to Kaisa, which is kind of scary, but I think Fountain Valley is able to regain their confidence. You know, they're keeping headstrong, they're staying cool, calm, and collected. Or being very patient, and if their patience is able to stay throughout the game, then it's going to pay off and lead to them maybe winning this matchup against La Quinta. Certainly true. Unfortunately, the mid tower does not go down for Fountain Valley, but it is brought very low, which means they will be able to come back, kill that tower, get that extra bit of map pressure, get that extra bit of gold that comes from killing that tower. But one thing I do actually want to point out is the initiation for both of these teams, because Fountain Valley has a lot of secondary engaged. They don't have champions like a Jarvan who can just travel half the length of the, the map, pull down the Cataclysm, and keep all of your carries locked up so they can't run away. They have a lot of champions that are good at maybe choosing a target and CCing them, or maybe a good stun. But meanwhile, a fight actually happens in the mid lane as once again, Ifals goes in and deals a ton of damage, and Topaz is here, brings down the teleport, but is not going to be able to find anyone. Yeah, a little bit too late on that teleport there, but able to at least apply some pressure on the top side of the map. But losing that mid turret allows for Lakinta to still keep up their lead, able to show that they have control of this matchup. But Fountain Valley, they're not going to go down without a fight. We see mid turrets a little bit low. They want to play around that. They see that they all reset. They all went back to base to buy more items. So that buys Fountain Valley enough time to probably get this mid lane turret. And, mm, look at that. Minion wave for oh. iFalls. That has to be so satisfying, killing all of those. They have lives, you know. They have family Do and they? children. I think so. They're AI. Yeah, I mean, they were cheering for them in the beginning of the match. Didn't you see the KDA, like, song pop up and they were cheering for them. Can, okay, can I talk about this? I, I hate that setting. You can't turn it off. It's there no matter what yeah. you do. <laughs> You're always going to have the, what if I don't want a bunch of minions cheering for me? What if I just want to play my game of League of Legends, walk out on the rift, and not have my life viewed by a bunch of minions that... Are you feeling guilty because you're putting their lives at risk? Is that why you feel bad about having that on? N no. No? Are you sure? I... I don't, I decline to continue right. this. Okay, so I this think game I know my of League of Let's Legends. Let's go back to this matchup right here. <laughs> 
All right, talk oh, about the match. No. Akon is going to get picked off, locked up. What a beautiful initiation from Mike XD. Takes him down right as the Infernal Dragon is spawning. Yeah, he's going to say, come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Lucian not having a fun time this game, 0-3. And Lucian is one of those champions where if he's not able to get a slight lead and able to snowball from it, then it's really detrimental, but... Common tries to get the dragon, doesn't, but does manage to escape with his life, but does almost get the 50-50 steal. It's a 50-50. You know, Mikey XD was there. It was a safe steal attempt. You do have Kurno shift, so if you mess up, you press the whoopsie button, and then you go back in time. And now we see La Quinta going bottom five, man, strong. There's not a response yet. A beautiful paddle star is going to chunk out the AD carry of Fountain Valley just as this fight is beginning. Yeah, Coben getting chunked to half HP there as Ifals is looking for these picks. That's generally how they're going to, they're able to siege these turrets because of Zoe. Zoe's able to apply some pressure with the paddle shot. And if he just lands a really good one on top of Mikey XD is squishy, he didn't build tank and Topaz not able to get enough damage throughout the ultimate. Yeah, I just trying to find those pickoffs in the jungle and individual plays like that can mean so much in this game because if Topaz is able to get that kill, it means that suddenly La Quinta is a man down and they really can't take the team fights they want to be fighting as they have this just complete map pressure. And especially as now the Baron has spawned on the map, it's so crucial to try to have control and sight lines of that objective at all times. Baron is going to be so easy for La Quinta to take. They have a Kai'Sa who has two Infernals and a Mountain Drake. That's amazing, especially with the way that Kai'Sa's passive works. She's able to apply the five proc passive onto Baron and just shred it so fast. Increased by the Mountain Drake buff that does increase damage towards uh, legendary monsters like Baron and Dragon. So that enough is very intimidating. I Mango sitting in a really good spot, has the Gunsu's Rage Blade and the Storm Razor is completed. Not quite the three item power spike expected from Kaisa, but I Mango is in a really good spot right now. Hey, Ernesto. You know what it's time for? What time is it? Time for another summary of League of Legends. See that big worm right there on the top left of top right of your screen? That's called Baron Nasher. And what it means is it is a big, mean thing. And both of these teams really want to kill it. It does a lot of damage. It is really tanky. Yeah, it looks really cool, doesn't it? It does. But if you kill it, your minions become super strong. And they help you kill the enemy towers and are such a huge objective. If you take this Baron, it is a crucial factor in winning the game. And right now, La Quinta thinks they can take it because there's no vision for Fountain Valley. Yeah, Fountain Valley is going to be way too late. Look how fast they're shredding in. Mikey XD is a little bit too low for this team fight. And Fountain Valley is just going to regress, not going to pressure and try to punish the Baron call. And that was absolutely textbook coming from La Quinta. Clear out the enemy team's wards. Cl push up your lanes with your minions so there's no vision for the other team. And then take Baron while there is no vision. Even if Fountain Valley goes in, there could have been a bait. They could have been walking into a very dangerous situation. So very well done to get that Baron. And now you can see the minions. No, they're going for a fight, jumping right in. Mike XD maybe goes a little too far. It's going to get pulled up and go down. Huey is going to be the next to fall. And maybe a little bit too much aggression coming out of La Quinta. You know, I really like Urgot because when you land those ultimates and you pull them back, you say, get over here. And that's what Fountain Valley's doing. They're not allowing for La Quinta to disrespect them. They're like, hey, we're still relevant in this game. You may have the lead, but we still are a force to be reckoned with. And La Quinta are biting more than they can chew there. They're better off just resetting and trying to take for the more turrets. And this allows for them to kill Jarvan and Hui and able to get that middling turret with the cost of Kobe dying. High False is able to get a very crucial kill pick up. And that is actually devastating because it means it will be a 5v4 in favor of La Quinta. That was just absolutely amazing play coming out from Eiffels to find that extra kill for their team. Cobbin maybe going a little too bit far forward as well, trying to get that pick over the bush, but very risky when a Zoe is so dangerous over these walls. Yeah, they have to be careful. At this point of the game, Eiffels and Imango are really feeling really good. They're, they don't necessarily need Braum or Jarvan to set up these fights. They can just really just steamroll it from there. And Fountain Valley just has to be careful. They are taking these fights and premeditated. They're thinking these out a lot of, ahead of time before they actually commit to these fights. And they realize they're not able to protect this mid lane turret. They have to give this up to La Quinta. And they have to help to see what's next on the, on the agenda. 
Yeah, but I do not want to count Fountain Valley out just yet. You've seen what happens when La Quinta gets complacent, when they don't plan out quite as well. They send some members back, that little bit of mis miscommunication we saw earlier, and Fountain Valley immediately capitalized. This game, despite being in favor of La Quinta, has still such a close game, and I'm so excited this is the sort of game we got for our best of one. Yeah, meanwhile, we do see La Quinta looking to take down that bot turret. Fountain Valley might be way too late to defend this. I Mango should be able to pick this up by themselves. But he has his two friends, Buddy Sui and iFoss, able to support this call here. Actually, Tobas might is here. He's able to maybe hold this out for him. Yeah, and they do still have those buffed up Baron minions. So much tank here, so much hard to kill deal, so much more damage. But in the end, Fountain Valley groups up as a team, pulls together some of that synergy, and is able to keep their tower safe. Yeah, we see Urga. He's starting to come online. He has the Gargoyle, Gargoyle Stone Plate, so he has the increased defenses from the active. And if he is able to use the Righteous Koi, initiate, and start these fights, pick off the members needed, say, I Mango or Mikey XD, then the fight is secured for Fountain Valley, but they have to play this nice and slow. They have to take their time with this. They can't rush this. Ooh, meanwhile, a little bit too far forward from Eiffel's as he gets picked up and locked down, still alive, but both teams now having to retreat as Lakita is trying to take down. Health Rush brought low. That is a kill for the young on Flash Forward. It's Grim to bring down the fear, and Fountain Valley has found themselves another fight, and now there's only fleeing for Lakita as once again Fountain Valley cleaning up. That's the downfall of full damage, Jarvan. You are squishier than a water balloon, and you are going to get popped like one if you don't respect them. And look at that. Found Valley just says, all right, we're going to press go. Full force, full throttle, and look at that. La Quinta is in shock. They're not sure what's going on. They're scratching their heads saying, I thought we were the ones winning. I'm really scared right now. And what happened there was we have been praising iFalls this entire game. They have been doing such a fantastic job of these trouble bubbles and paddle stars and getting these picks. But that time just went a little bit too far forward, a little bit too greedy trying to get that extra kill. And immediately Fountain Valley turned on them, put down so much damage. And these immediately reactions coming out of Fountain Valley are just a pleasure to behold. Yeah, Fountain Valley feeling really good about themselves right now. And eventually, Dragon, none of the buffs or objectives are up for now. So they're just going to reset, buy some items, because they're going to cash in the amount of money they got from that last fight. Because, boy, did they cash in a lot of money. Yeah, getting so much shutdown gold from those kills. And it's crazy. Despite how late this game is, there is still only a 2,000 gold difference. And as the game goes on, you get so much more money that that just doesn't mean anything. Despite La Quinta being in the driver's seat, they have not been able to expand their monetary lead, their strength enough, that it's really even relevant at this point. Both of these teams are effectively on equal terms, and these team fights will just matter on who plays it better. Yeah, not a lot of vision. Coping going in. He is able to do this without being punished. He does have Chrono Shift if things go wrong, but he's able to get a decent amount of damage chunked out from Ike Trash. I'm gonna tell him to respect his side of the jungle. But meanwhile, we see Mikey XD looking for initiation. Pops the the Ionia's Rage or Blade right there, and looking for something to pick off. But sees no game, no fish, because all the fish are swimming away from Mikey XD. And very crucially we see that iTrash doesn't have very much magic resist. He took that Titanic Hydra and that Fiery Armor. He has so little magic resist that we can see this Lysandra and Cobbin can still deal a ton of damage to him because he because they deal a different kind of damage than the just pure auto attack characters. So it's going to be very crucial that the tank is not able to really spice. And meanwhile, beautiful stun coming down on the Mikey XD brought so low, but he is going to be saved by Huey on the backside. Yeah, speaking about the build from iTrash, building Sunfire Cape second item after you got your Tiamat item, it's kind of really doing so much harm. It's just going to go right in. A beautiful ultimate is going to come in to save Eyeballs, but the fight is starting to turn once again into Fountain Valley's favors. No! Cobbin is Kobe is doing so much heat on the backside, but I trash is here, but here comes Toe Pass on the Mango. Here's the ultimate, and now fleeing is the status on to trash as he's trying to get on the con, but it is not going to matter, and that is gonna be an ace for Fountain Valley. Fountain Valley says this isn't over. We don't care if you guys are winning us and slamming us in the early game, but now they just got a clean ace, Toe Pass and Con, survive the fight. And they're able to maybe get something out of this, maybe get this top lane turret, but the min minions down mid lane are starting to build up. They have to respond to that, but for now, they're just going to shove in top. 
Hope to apply some pressure and look to establish some vision for Baron, because that's going to be coming up right now. And we just have to talk about the synergy from Fountain Valley. You mentioned it earlier in the game, and this is where it comes into play in these team fights when it all comes down to are you able to work together cohesively as a team? And despite the early disadvantages, Fountain Valley have been playing immaculately in these team fights. Yeah, Coven just gonna go ahead and set up. They're sitting around the top side of the map here because this Baron is gonna be huge. The second Baron is a lot stronger than the first Baron. It provides a lot more for these teams here. And I think whoever picks this up is definitely in a really good chance of just winning the game and closing it out from there. So Fallon Valley can't give this up for free. And once again, Lakita is just going to jump right on top. But this time, Fountain Valley might be ready. Baron is already down to about half health. Will Fountain Valley get their time? But Bard Ultimate is going to keep it solid for a little bit longer. But are they going to be able to get something for it? Alt F4 chunk down from a beautiful Zoe Paddle Star. And once again, Fountain Valley is just going to see the Baron to Lakita. Yeah, they didn't have TP available for Topaz, I believe. He might have had it up, but there wasn't enough vision coverage for him to teleport on top of. He was busy handling the bot wave, and now La Quinta's feeling a little bit better. They were a little bit scared during that mid -game, those mid-game fights where Found Valley was just running them over. But with that second Baron buff and Kai'Sa starting to scale, it does have the third item. I'm not too sure if that's the most optimized build for Kai'Sa at the moment. I think you're more focused on the AP damage, but already I think they still need to focus more on the AD damage since they already have Zoe, and I think Zoe just provides enough AP damage. So what? that being said, scaling what? from Kai'Sa. What is this, though? What is this cheese coming out from Fountain Valley? We see five of them in a bush to the side of the river. They are looking to try to find a very cheesy gank onto Lakita. If this is scouted out, it could be terrible for them. If they're not able to get back to their base in time, they might seem to have backed off. They might be able to get there. It's very dangerous to try to go around a Zoe in the jungle, but they are going to be able to get back to their base. And very nicely for Lakita, they were able to scout out that trap before it could go down on them. Yeah, it's 5v4, uh, it's 5v4 for Found Valley, but almost turns into a 4v4 with Coben getting popped. And that is the damage from Eiffel's having to pop the Zanya's Hourglass just to prevent death. What a beautiful, beautiful paddle star. Excellent counterplay coming out when going against Zoe, if I do say so myself. And we see Topaz going to be eating a lot of damage, but it's Urga. Urga just says, ouch, 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 and then walks away. Yeah, he has those tanky items. He has that veil to give them himself a little bit of magic resist. But now the fifth dragon of the game is going to be coming up. I don't think, not quite an elder dragon just yet, but a second earth dragon means that more tower takes, more objective kills are going to be real happy for Lakinta. But I don't know if Fountain Valley is going to be so happy to let it go. Yeah, they can't really give this up. I think if they're going to give this up, this is really bad. All four are looking for the steal. Cosmic Binding almost gets it, but the smite from Mike Gixi says, no, this is secured, buddy. Your jungler's not here. Kobe getting green in a bad spot. The Cataclysm comes down and takes him down. Kobe's going to be the next focus, but it's going to come down right back on the back line. But it's not enough. It's going to be brought down himself. And that might be the mistake that ends the game. There is still a Baron buff up. But no, La Quinta not going to use that. They're going to have to go back mid and try to get those minions because they didn't have them. So they're not quite able to siege the tower just yet. Yeah, uh, more than 30 seconds left for any of these found value members to respawn. So this might be enough time for them to get at least an inhibitor. That's what I'm expecting from this damage coming out from La Quinta. They still do have Urgot. Topaz is still alive. So they might be able to do something. But this is 3v5 in favor of La Quinta. Tower is going to go down. Inhibitor is going to be next on the menu. Fountain Valley very wisely are just going to back up to their last two turrets. Those deal a lot of damage. And here comes the ultimate from Bard, buying his team that little bit of time to respawn. Kobe is already back up. This might be the last fight of the game. My kick, he goes in. So does Kobe right to the backside of the fight, but it's just going to get annihilated near the end. Con from the backside, but gets smashed! by Mikey XD, and this fight is slowly turning in the favors. Urgot from the backside, back can he get that kill? Common as well, trying to get down Eiffel's, but doesn't find, get the final tick. Nobody has gone down, I take it back. There's the kill from the mid laner, and just like that, La Quinta secures the game. Wow, what a game right there from 
a huge performance coming out from La Quinta. Fallon Valley able to stand their ground, but La Quinta were just able to close out the match. Yeah, doing an absolutely fantastic job, and we just saw the strength of their star players. Mikey XD and iFalls absolutely popping off that game, making an immaculate show of strength as getting those beautiful picks that were just enough to snowball the game in their favor. And I really gotta say, it was iFalls and Zoe that really set enough pressure also, Mikey XD's Jarvan definitely put in a lot of work. It did fall off a little bit, but definitely, and based on consistency, I got to give it to iFalls on that Zoe pick right there. Yeah, except for like one small misplay, playing amazingly throughout the entire game. But I want to bring it back to Fountain Valley. They had a hard early game. It's very hard to come back in League of Legends when you have an early game like that, but it didn't matter to them. They got ready for those team fights, and they did a great job of being staying competitive, fighting against, and you can see the players shaking hands in front of your screen, and that was just a great game for both of these teams. Yeah, both teams did well. Excellent performance. Just turns out, La Quinta just found a way to end the game. You could see that La Quinta was scared for a little bit there, and they were just like, all right, we got to win somehow. And then they found the answer, and the answer was presented to them, and they were able to utilize their tools and close out the game. These are all students. We have to remember that. These students have homework. They have exams. If they're seniors, they got college applications. And look at them. They have time to practice and able to perform at such a pretty good level of League of Legends, if I do say so myself.